Okay guys, another week has started and the US dollar is going down. All right, is going down. As um, if you haven't watched it yet, we've posted a podcast, me and Nathan Bray, one of our um, senior account managers as well. I think, I can't remember his other title, but he's an analyst as well. He does post some videos on YouTube. Um, you probably must have seen his face already. So if you haven't watched the podcast, go and watch it. It's full of good quality content, all right? Full of good quality content. I would highly recommend for you um, to watch it. And, you know, we've talked about the US dollar finishing its strength in March. And the numbers are actually coming in as, okay, it's over for the US dollar, right? It's over for the US dollar. Euro is taking up the front. We've seen Euro dollar rising, uh, raising since last week, all right? Even though now we did had NFP with better numbers, the unemployment rate, and as well, the average hourly earning was very bad, okay? And remember guys, I've always mentioned that, okay? Um, when we have the NFP, NFP day, we need all of those three datas combine it in one um, area to go to where it should go. If you wanna go up, then all of the three needs to be positive. Uh, or if you wanna go down, all of the three needs to be negative, or if it goes up, major two have to be positive and one can be negative. And it goes like that, all right? It's pretty simple. But I have the numbers in my front and it's not looking great. It's not looking great because the average hourly earnings, the consensus was at 0.3%, it came in at 0.1% and it just shows to me that the USA is not able, well, the business in there, it's not being able to pay the labor, what they should be paying, all right? Because uh, the previous um, was 0.4% in January, uh, sorry, in December, right? And then in January, it came at 0.6, a big spike up. And now in February, it comes 0.1. That's a huge decline from 0.6 to 0.1. All right, that's 0.5% lower on what they used to be paid. So that's not good right? The only thing that rests us to think about it is they can't afford higher costs of labor because the interest rates is too low, it's too, it's too high. Therefore, businesses are willing to pay less and the population is willing to take less. Because look at this, the actual how much people was employed, the consensus was at 200,000 but it came in as 275,000. So that means that those 275,000, 75 above what the works expected, is willing to receive much lower, right? The salary much lower than what they were in last year. So people are desperate for jobs and the US don't wanna pay them, all right? So there is a contingency curve that we say, right, in, in economic terms, is when the labor is so desperate for work that they do whatever they, they can, right, I can't, can't use all the words here, but they're going to do whatever they possibly can to buy the food for the family. It's so good to see, you know, YouTube videos, you know, famous people on Instagram showing off their cars, the food, everywhere they are. But remember, this is not the major population. This is not the major population. This is a tiny percentage of the population that does actually do those things. I'm not saying that they're wrong. They're completely right. If they battle for it, if they have the money, go for it. But on economic, right, as an economist, I need to look at it and say, okay, what is happening on the country and what is actually important? All right, alcohol is not important. Bread is important. Cigarette is not important. Corn, rice, onion, it's important. Potatoes is important. Oranges are important. And all of the food energy, sorry, all of the food prices have indeed came down. This is why we had a lower CPI. Now, if the energy spikes a little bit up, then that's going to be hard because 
population are receiving more, there's more people working, and the average hourly earnings is decreasing. All right, so it's pretty sad. It is what it is. I can't do much about it, but we need to see, okay? Because this all drags one question. Will the Fed cut this year to alleviate the pressures of those other business? Or will the Fed don't matter and keep holding for longer? All right? So this is my question and I wanna know your answer. Do you think the Fed will cut in June as the market is expecting as we can see on this um, photo here, screenshot of my computer screen? Or do you think it will go for longer, all right? I was seeing some analysts talking about uh, the Fed will say that we'll cut three times and then two times and then one time and then one cut and then we'll hike in the next year. Okay, all right, they have their view, I have my view. I think this is completely, okay, completely wrong. I don't think this will happen, all right? The Fed can't afford to raise one more hike, it can't afford. If they raise one more, that's it folks, we're done. All right, we can, well, I can't even possibly imagine what could happen if the Fed raises another 25 basis points. If they do, I'm gonna be very, very surprised. I don't even know what to do, all right, to be honest. But it is what it is. All right, so today's Monday, and I have the economic calendar at my front here, and I'm just gonna see, cite the most high impact news, all right, as we did had today, the uh, Monday, right, quarter of a quarter GDP, quarter four for uh, last year, okay, 2023 quarter four, uh, GDP for Japan. Uh, it came lower than expected, so CPI is going higher, GDP is going lower, what's going on, all right, what's happening? Indeed, I wanna point out something here that came up on the Bloomberg terminal, and it says, uh, the Bank of Japan is considering scrapping its yield curve control program and instead indicating it in advance the amount of government bonds it plans to purchase. GG Press reported without saying where it got the information. All right, so a bit of insider information in there. It will stop its program to guide benchmark 10-year government bond yields to around 0% as part of its effort to normalize monetary policy. According to Gigi, the bank will decide on that and ending the negative interest policy as soon as the next policy meeting concluding on March 19, as the report says. So, that is very interesting. Um, will the Bank of Japan coming into next week, March 19, right, because we are on March 11 right now, we have another eight days up front, um, come to the meeting and say, we're gonna finish the negative um, interest rates, but what we will do is um, start to, as it says here, it starts to um, indicating in the event the amount of government bond it plans to purchase. All right, that, that's gonna be pretty interesting, guys. I don't know, this is a, just an insider information from someone that we don't even know. This is on Bloomberg Terminal. So, you know, I, I don't know. It's just something, it's just food to think, all right? Food to talk, like, as they say. Anyways, on Tuesday, we're gonna have German CPI as well as US CPI. German CPI, month over month, consensus is at 0.4%. Um, core CPI, month over month, for USA, 0.3%, consensus. CPI year over year for February, consensus at 3.1% and the month of a month, 0.4%. Okay, let's, let's just stop here for a second. We have German CPI, okay, that's fine. But we have US CPI when we had a higher employment, people getting paid less, therefore they can't afford to actually purchase most probably we're gonna have an as expected or a little bit lower month over month CPI, okay? This is my thinking. Wednesday, we're gonna have GDP for UK. On Thursday, we're gonna have core retail sales as well as PPI and retail sales for US. And that's it for this week, guys. We're not gonna have much more uh, from other countries instead of US. This is the high volatility ones. Now, if we go for the median volatility, let's say, uh, we have some 
Um, we have some things happening on New Zealand, Australia, and you know China as well, and Brazil, and so on. But the most important one was the one that I've mentioned. So, you know, just just thinking again. Put this on your mind. Uh, fundamental analysis are not only reading those numbers that I've just mentioned, is actually getting through those numbers and thinking how the population will um, live with those numbers now. And most importantly, how does the direct investors, the foreign direct investors, will react to those news? And how are the bonds going, you know, reacting to those news? So uh, for me, this is all today. Um, if you guys have any questions, please comment down below and be ready for next, sorry, not next Tuesday, tomorrow, um, 6 to 7 p.m., we're going to have my webinar and I'm going to be back testing all of the news and how the fundamental actually react on the chart, right? Because most of people say, okay, fundamental does have a reaction for a short period of time. No, it doesn't. It has, you know, a pretty big um, out of sample and in sample uh, reaction. So I'm going to prove to this to you tomorrow. So if you are interested on learning fundamental and how to apply on the actual chart, be ready and be registered for tomorrow. How can you register? Just go to our website, you know, somewhere around here, probably on the down on this video uh, description will be the link. You can click on that. You're going to go for ACY website, go to learn, go to um, webinars and select my name there and you will, will be registered. No dollars, no cost, all for free, all right? Best content for free. Um, and please give us a thumbs up on this video, subscribe to the channel, and I hopefully can see you tomorrow. All right, guys, I wish everyone a good trading week ahead and see you tomorrow.